think that my own life history seems almost irrelevant to me, for sure, and probably to most other people. I'm like everybody else. I, I started searching for God in earnest when I was about 35 or 40 years old. The rest of it was just familial stuff. My own family happened to be Roman Catholic. It doesn't matter, it just happened to be. But I found myself disaffected from those teachings. I didn't really reject them altogether, but I found certain doctrines within the church uh, disturbing, upsetting, and unreal to me. And so in my late teens and early 20s, I started looking for some other kind of God. Couldn't find that. When I got to be 35 or 40, I embarked on a real investigation about all of that and about other, other aspects of life as well, all of life. And somewhere in my early 50s, the situation became rather urgent because I found myself on the street, living on the sidewalk as a street person, not for a week or a month, but for a whole year of my life panhandling, asking people for a dime or a quarter to get through the day. I found out then how cold-hearted some people can be and how generous some other people can be. It was a real lesson for me. And uh, out of that experience of being on the street for a year because of a broken neck in an automobile accident and losing my job and I had no way to get uh, benefits from the government and so forth, I began asking God, what am I doing here? Why is life the way it is? What have I done to deserve a life of such continuing struggle? Somebody tell me the rules. I'll play, just give me the rules. And that's when I had a conversation with God. In my experience, God spoke directly to me and I heard whole thoughts and I was given deep insights and I began to write them down in a personal journal just for myself, never dreaming anyone would ever see it, never know, even know about it. But somewhere in that um, process, I was told this will one day become a book. And I can recall thinking, sure, you and a hundred other people are gonna send your middle of the night mental meanderings to a publisher who's going to say, we have to get this thing out at once. This man's talking to God. But I sent it to the publisher anyway because I wanted to test it. To be honest with you, I was testing God, testing my experience of God. God said this would become a book and I thought, well, we'll see about that. Well, it did become a book. It became a book that was on the New York Times bestseller list for three years. It was translated into 37 languages, sold 15 million copies. Here I am, trying desperately to live up to what I was told in those messages. I try to make it very clear to everybody who knows me, I'm not my book. It came through me. It came to me, but it did not come from me. It's important to understand that, otherwise you wouldn't understand me. You'd think that I was supposed to show up as some kind of a guru or some kind of a teacher, and I'm neither of those things. I'm just a regular person. But like all regular people, I do have divinity within me. And I do have the capacity to become evolved, to live a life of extraordinary expression of who and what I really am. That's what I'm searching for. That's what I'm reaching for. That's what I'm living for. Now in these last 20 or 30 years of my life, whatever I have left here in this particular physical form, we'll see how I do with that. I just wrote a book called The, the Storm Before the Calm. And it talks about what's going on on the planet these days during this whole sequence in time, not just these weeks or months, but these next several years and the few years that have just passed. It, we're in a, in a window right now. We're in a window right now of time. I'm gonna say that a window is gonna be about 12 or 15, maybe 18 years wide. And during that window, I see us 
moving through what I'm calling the overhaul of humanity. Now, overhaul is an interesting word. It means the repair of something, the disassembling of something, but then putting it back together to repair it so that it works better than it ever worked before. So when something is being overhauled, it's not being dismantled permanently, but simply being reassembled, taken apart, but reassembled in a new way. That's what's happening right now on the earth with individuals in our lives. Many people have seen this in their own life. That's why I wrote a book called When Everything Changes, Change Everything, which asks people and invites people to change everything about how they experience life, about what they think they know about life, about what they imagine to be the purpose of life, about what they understand to be the whole raison d'etre of all of it, the reason for being of everything and their deeper understandings about the thing that some of us call God. And so this overhaul is part of a natural process. It's not a punishment, obviously. It's not something that nobody was expecting, in fact. You could almost anticipate it. And that is why some members of the spiritual community, even from many years ago, from centuries ago, predicted it for just this point in time. I think if there were something that I would like to say personally, from my heart to yours, it would be, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of these days and times, of this future that's just ahead of us. Don't be worried or concerned or frustrated or upset about our tomorrows. Everything is rolling out exactly as it should be. There will be some sacrifices made by some, that's true. Some things are going to change in our global financial and geophysical and geopolitical situation, that's true. But all change, I've been told by God, is change for the better. The point that was made in when everything changes, change everything. And so it's very important for us to understand that what's going on here is not a haphazard process. It's not an off the wall experience that we're totally out of control like people in a runaway stagecoach. God knows exactly what she's doing, and he's very aware of the impact it's going to have on all of us. It's going to create a tomorrow the likes of which we could only have dreamt in our grandest notions. So be not afraid, but yet be of good cheer and of light heart, and allow yourself to be a true messenger to the world, to carry that exact message to others. Now is not the time to run scared. Now is the time to express and experience yourself in the grandest notion we ever had about who we are. Do that, it's all gonna work out.